Now I don't specifically specialize in sound design, but I do specialize in video editing, which includes that. And after many years of learning how to incorporate this very important part of editing, which is sound design, I've decided to share a few things I've learned. Then later in this video, I'll show you my default settings for it. Enjoy. Have you ever heard the statement, the silence is so loud, indicating that even silence itself has a sound? There's definitely a contradiction there, but if you really think about it, there's some truth to that. If you're in a room by yourself, there's still a slight noise, like the air conditioning or something. Or if you're peacefully sitting outside, there's still the sound of wind, leaves, birds in the distance, ambience, if you will. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well. What would the difference be when you're putting together a video? Adding ambience and sound effects will really increase the depth of an edit you're working on. And it also shows a level of detail that's impressive. Even adding sound effects to titles, transitions, and movements will show someone that as an editor, you're really focused on making the video or section that you're working on the best it can be. Keep in mind that there needs to be a balance as well because too many sounds can make it annoying and confusing at times. Don't just throw whatever sound effect you stumbled across just because you want to use it. Make sure it fits the style and what you're using to visually portray the sound. And this doesn't mean you can't be creative with it, but I'll get to that in a second. All right, I'll show you two transitions, one with sound effects and one without. And you can tell me which one you think is better. Transition one, transition two. I've posted multiple videos of me using sound effects that isn't necessarily accurate. Here's a clip from another video I made, for example. I was thinking of a sound effect that was kind of like, like a bling shine, but I didn't want it to be a, a cringy, you know, ding, kind of like this. So I was thinking, you know, what could work? And I came across a sharp katana sound effect. And so this is what it sounds like with the clip. And it works pretty well whenever it's applied to everything else. Sometimes visually, the accurate sound isn't always the best to use. You know what views rapidly going up on a video would sound like? It'd sound like this. But adding this makes it so much better. See what I mean? There are so many good ways you can creatively use sounds. Just sit back and re-watch that section you're wanting to add to and think to yourself, what do I think this would sound like? And if I'm being honest, sometimes you'll change your mind to something completely different. So keep watching till you land on something that gives you this reaction. People can show their creativity in many different ways, and this might just be yours. You know, from the first word in this sentence, you could probably already tell there's something off. Here, let me transition to something a little bit better. That transition fell off too, didn't it? One of the most annoying things that could happen when dealing with sound design is it being off sync. It's not great. This could also apply to music as well. If your intent was to cut to the beat, but it's slightly off. It just doesn't sit well. This is also why rewatching the section you're putting together is vital. A good way to make sure that sound or part of a song is lined up perfectly is when you add a marker to it and then just line it up that way. Overall, make sure you're replaying what you're working on when it's fully rendered because sometimes the playback can lag a little bit if it's not rendered all the way through. <laughs> Usually when you're editing, you can see an audio meter, and this is when it comes in handy. After spending time adjusting the voice, adding sound effects, and music, it can be easy to lose focus to this meter. And after layering and layering and layering all of that, even if the layers aren't spiking, the overall sound from the video could be clipping when it's so loud that it starts to become distorted. Now this could be an issue from the mic that recorded it, or it could be in post-production as well. So as long as you're doing your part in making sure the audio isn't so loud that the viewer has to recover from it, you should be okay. 
A simple way to prevent this as well is to add a limiter. This brings down the parts that do spike to an even level, making sure it doesn't reach that red line. In other words, clipping. I mean, I've made the mistake of not doing that in the past and it is not fun after waiting a good amount of time for it to export just to realize the audio is distorted at different parts of the video <laughs> and it's your fault. So save yourself some time and make sure you're checking the audio levels periodically. Okay, so the default settings that I apply to clips and this is gonna be mainly for voice actually what I'm using right now. And of course, all of this needs to be adjusted accordingly. Now, it specifically has to be in this order because in Final Cut, the effect that's listed at the bottom is actually the top layer of the effects, if that makes sense. So if it's a different editor, I'm not sure, but it can be flipped and you can just swap the bottom and top effect. But for this, it goes channel EQ, compressor, and limiter. Now, like I said, limiter is at the bottom here because that's actually the top layer of the effects. Everything above the limiter in this case, it's going to limit it. And I'll explain more how a limiter works in a second. Now the channel EQ is there to pretty much just block out different parts that might be a little bit high pitch. And you also wanna click analyze. So it shows the waveform. And so you wanna grab certain parts and bring it up to the top and you might hear some screeching and some parts that are a little bit high pitch or sharp and you can just bring that down a little bit and you can do that throughout the channel eq now the compressor is there if you need to bring up the lower parts of the audio and compress it so it's close to being at an even volume and like i said this has to be adjusted to the audio that you're using every time this is the default setting that i have placed for it and the last one to seal it off is like i explained the limiter. In short, like I said earlier, it brings all of the parts that peak down to a flat level so it doesn't red line and it helps it not be as distorted. And from what I've seen, this can also help if you want to bring up the lower parts of the audio as well without it clipping at the top. The gain is what adjusts the overall volume and the output level you'll have to adjust accordingly so that it lowers it to the correct amount which makes it not clip. And in Final Cut, like I'm using now, if you wanna save all of these in this order so that you can apply it to other footage in a click of a button, you can just press Save Effects Preset and then save to whatever destination that you want. Also, another tip that might be helpful is if you're working with a long strand of audio, it might be best to put it in a compound clip so that inside of it, you can adjust all the effects and whenever you have to cut things out, you can just cut the compound clip and you don't have to readjust each individual one. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> now adjusting sound design is very different on different types of videos. In this video, I compared the difference between editing corporate and editing on YouTube. And sound design is definitely a big part of that. That's very different. So you can watch that if you'd like and thank you for a thousand subscribers.